right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's get right into it. NBA 2K22, man, we got a lot of stuff going on, man. We got your boy Wedgie Pluggy. He just dropping. He just laying it out there, just letting this hang with this with what well, he dropping out there he said this is how it is and i don't care what nobody say we got my boy coyote man my boy coyote always has some good information and some stuff for us to contemplate and think about and you know what i'm saying his, his thoughts on the game and stuff like that we got laker fan come on man laker fan man you know he gonna be on here with a very philosophical view on a lot of stuff this is something that i'm, I'm, I'm ready to talk about because this is something that i tell people all the time when i tell them you know Y'all gonna see what it is, man. And uh, last but not least, you know, we just got a few opinions about the game, man. So if you don't do anything else, make sure y'all like the video, man, because liking the video helps it get out there to the people. Because if it, look, look, if you don't like the video, then nobody's gonna see it, right? But if you do like the video, you people will see it. Like, if we get, you know, we, it, it, let me give y'all an example. We get two, 300 likes, it's normally gonna be three, 4,000 views. If we get, Set 100 likes or something like that, it's always gonna be close to the 10,000 views or something like that, so people can see this. This is information that people need to see, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about later on in the video, because this is not just about the game, this is about life in general, man. Y'all don't need no life advice from me, but hey, it is what it is. Also, comment on this filter right here that we using right here, man. Is this filter fire? Or oh, is it trash? I don't know, man. I think it's kind of fire, man. And uh, if y'all, like I said, man, just like the video, man, because if y'all don't do nothing else, uh, it helps us get so close to that oh so coveted 100k and without further ado, let's get the video underway Hey, man, is this filter a dub or an L man? I think it's a dub man. Look at this joint man. Make me seem happy all the time No matter what I'm doing and all that so you know it is what it is But up first your boy Badgy Pluggy Badgy Pluggy just says I don't think 2k22 is dead as of right now He just laying it right there laying his out there and he's just saying it's not somebody saying current gen or uh current or next gen uh one person said he's on current so you know that's what they think it is uh somebody says current is horrible gotta go to the gotta go to the new parks every three games and then and, and those three games take like uh 45 minutes to an hour no one is on the freaking game or people are just standing around doing nothing i think a lot of that is because a lot of people are transitioning to Next gen, PlayStations are easier to get. Xboxes are easier to get. All this stuff is easier to get, and so as 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 it goes, people are going to be on the newer systems a little bit more. And it, and it sucks to think about that if you're on current gen or if you hit the wagon to current gen or whatever like that. And I, I but I think that we are just in that transition period, man. Something I feel like they should do is they should. I feel like they almost should have made the forty system transfer so like when somebody gets off of current gen and they go to next gen then that 40 would follow them so if they had already had two 40s and they went over then it would follow them so they would so there would be no apprehension to going to next gen because i think this is something that's going to keep a lot of people back like i started over here and then i'm transitioning but i don't want to lose my two 40s so they're probably going to stay over there so I, I wish they would have done that uh or something similar to it but hey, it is what it is. I don't think the game is dead either. Like I said, we had an extensive conversation. Me and Man Man Grind Hard, y'all go check that out. Uh, we had an extensive conversation yesterday about how we don't feel like the game is dead. And it's just the, it, like the views and stuff like that may be dead, but we may just need to shift our content because it's not 2K's responsibility to put out a game that we can make money off of. It's, they have a fiduciary's responsibility to make money for their shareholders and the company itself. They don't have a responsibility to us to make a game where we can easily make money off of or what have you. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Hey, up next, we got your boy, Juan. He says this, uh, do you guys think 2K purposely made all these changes uh, over the last two months to bring more casuals to Rec and Pro-Am? Uh, not gonna lie, Rec and Pro-Am are the best modes in 2K22. And I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm not gonna say it's just Rec and Pro-Am. I'm gonna say it's all the 5v5 game modes are the best ones. I think a lot of the changes that they make, and like we talked about this in the video yesterday, y'all need to go check that video out. A lot of these changes that they are making, they make for the five on five game modes. They're not making it for the park. It's almost as if, even though park makes a good amount of money, we know that the five on five game modes really carry this game. And let's just be, let's just break it down to you real quick. You got 
Play Now, the most played play game that everybody plays. That's what actually, so that means that actually sells the game because the people that's not gonna buy it to pay, spend any money on the game, that's what they buy it for. My GM and stuff like that, the guy, like I said, all those guys that we grew up with that don't be on YouTube, Twitch, any of that stuff, that's what they play. They sit in the house waiting on the next play and they and they playing those game modes, you know, doing their stuff. That's who's carrying the game as far as buying the game. Now, then you got the most profitable part of the game, which is my team. That's five on five. They got some three on three comp components, but you know, it is what it is. All of these changes that they made, they made them for the five on five game modes. They didn't make them for the three on three game modes. These are these are an afterthought. They make a considerable amount of money from parking stuff, but once we make our bills, we don't spend money. Those guys in my team and all that stuff, they spend money all year every time they drop a pack. So those are the game modes that they that they made the steals changes for, and they kept toning these things down for with the layups and the contested shots. Like, could you imagine having LeBron James going in there against Lou Williams and you can't make a layup? But in the park, I might have a high enough, uh, I might have, I might be Lou Williams in size, but I might have a high enough, um, high enough contest inside to stop LeBron James from making it. So, and also in Wrecking Pro-Am. So it's, it's crazy because you have to try to balance the game across all of this. What will, what will really fix that is if they just had sliders for each game type. I don't know why they don't do that. I don't know if they can't do it. Maybe they can't do it. Maybe my career is just what it is and, and they don't they can't have the different sliders and stuff. It could be that. Um, I don't know how difficult it would be to have different sliders for the different game modes. I would like to see like as far as the park and stuff, I feel like the park, th those sliders, the steals need to be turned up slightly so people can't just mindlessly dribble into you with in wreck and stuff like that. Oh, he's swimming! He's swimming! Um, Oh, my bad, man. Hold up, man. Brute had that had Brute had that boy swimming. I lost my train of thought right there, boy. Oh, he's swimming. You know you can't swim. Anyway, uh, so like in, in the in the park game mode, you need those steals to be bumped up because people have entirely too much space to work with. But in the five on five game modes, fatigue, natural fatigue is a factor. You can't do it at the, at the end of the game what you could do at the beginning. You're gonna run out of energy. You're gonna do stuff like that. So it's natural in those games. Oh, he got Bro, back, man. Hold on, run that back, man. He said, bro. Shit out here, nigga. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Can't get mad at that. He got him on one end. He got him bike on the other end. But at any rate, in the in the park, you got way more room to work with. In uh, the other game type, you got natural fatigue. And so with the natural fatigue, you, you don't have to worry about things like that as much because at the end of the game, of end of a rec game, end of a pro-am game, you can't do as many dribbles and stuff like that. And you have more time to strategize what you want to do. Um, against what they're doing and how you want to counter it. So I feel like they should have sliders for each game mode and all of that. I just don't understand, you know, why why we don't have those type of sliders and stuff like that. Maybe they can do it. Maybe they can't do it. I don't know. Let's listen to something by my boy, Coyote. He wants y'all. He got something to say, man. He did an awesome video. I'm going to leave a link to that video down in the description. Trays up! Green Bean Money Team Splash Down. And, uh, you know, we're we going to listen to Coyote real quick, man, and see what he got to say on this subject. Nobody ever misses. It's not basketball, man. People got to miss. Hold on, we're going to start it back up. I'm going to turn it up some. It's not basketball, man. People got to miss. Okay? Especially individuals that's not uh, 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 builds, that's not really shooting builds, something like that. Like, come on, man. They got to miss, man. It's not basketball. Don't nobody miss. Even wide open. Imagine if everybody is open never misses a shot. How is that satisfying to people? Now, of course, to the individual that's shooting, they don't want to miss. But when you plan certain people and it's already enough weird stuff going on on, on on the court, you need some mistakes to happen. Just some common regular error issues to occur. Check that video out. Right? Nope. All right, so what he's saying in that video is, you know, 2K has taken out all of the human error out of the game, more or less. It's like, when you're open, if you're a decent shooter, you're never gonna miss. If you're a mediocre shooter, you're never gonna miss. Even last year, you were missing if you were a marginal shooter. Like, last year, I'll give y'all an example. Last year, me and Anonymous were shooting around 66, 67% from, from three or what have you. This year, it's around 77, and he's at like 80% with like four threes every game. Y'all need to go check him out. Hashtag assist game. You like team rookie defense, you're going to love the channel. Exclamation point, exclamation point, new YT for the new YouTube video. He probably streaming right now, man. 
go over there, check my boy out. But what I'm saying is, like, when as on this game, as long as you're open, you're going to hit the shot, bro. It just is what it is. If you are even a decent shooter, you don't have to be good. You don't have to be exceptional. You don't have to be exquisite. You don't even got to be above average. You just have to be open. And I'm not mad at that if I leave them open, but then what that turns into is, is like, like my, my stance on it is, I don't care if you hit as long as I leave you open, but I mean, if I leave you open, I don't care if you hit the shot, whether whether it's green, white, whatever, whatever. But I do understand what he's saying. He, I don't think he's saying that we just need to miss or they need to artificially put in human error. I think he's just saying that they need to make the game, make shooting a tad harder than what it is. There needs to be another requirement to it uh, another component to it than you just being wide open. But this is what people ask for. I don't understand why they asked for it or what it was about the old shooting in 2K20 that made people so mad where people would miss here and there and stuff like that. But right now it just seems like if somebody's open, they're gonna hit the shot. I don't care about sniper. I don't care about them hitting whites. It's just like some, I, I don't even care about most of the stuff. But the badly timed ones, when you see people put up a shot and it says, late or early or whatever like that like those are egregiously mistimed shots those are the ones that i'm really worried about or even the ones that when i'm on top of his feet and he shoots the ball that goes in like sometimes you don't even have to be open it's just like there's no penalty for taking shots in the game so i understand what he's saying if you're hitting shots and you're wide open bro i really 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 don't even care uh about what it is but i also understand what he's saying is there should be some there should be some bills that can't shoot in the game but we can make the bill any way we want to, and that's kind of like what we asked for. So it's like we caught between a rock and a hard place. We wanted to be able to make the bills uh, any way we wanted to. We wanted to take the shackles off, so now everybody can shoot, and they wanted everybody to be able to shoot because that was one of the biggest issues with the games la la game last year that you had to have um, you had to have a high 90 in order to shoot consistently. It seemed like in 2K20, uh, 2K21, but now you don't have to have that. And all you, all you really got to do is just get open and you can smack with a with 65 or something like that. I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but then you see they touch shooting and then everybody got mad a couple weeks ago. So I, I really don't know where I stand on that. Where do y'all stand on that? Do y'all feel like people are making just too many shots? Do y'all only care about the whites? I just think, did you see? Let me show y'all something. This is, what I, this is what I think the issue is. Everybody's saying the sniper. I'm going to show y'all what I feel like the issue is, man. Look, Gambit is wide open. Look at look at how big that window is oh my god do you see how big this is bro he can't miss this shot so i think it's that right there that's what that's what i got a problem with more than anything like he is wide open he should make the shot and like you said it is gratifying to the person that's making the shot but to the person that's defending it it is tough but uh, y'all let me know what y'all think now in the comment section man up next last but not least man we've got your boy laker fan man yeah, i'm gonna so let him talk there's about there's been a something. little bit of stuff in my mind lately i feel like every content creator kind of runs into this at one point in time where I, I was looking into it a lot. It was something online that I saw and I dove super deep into it. It's called the hedonic treadmill. Long story short, it's pretty much that when humans reach one point in their life and get to the next and keep on going to the next and the next and the next, it's all so, so greedy mentality where let's say you had a job, essentially. You're, you're going from, you started at $8 an hour minimum wage as like a 16 year old kid, right? And then you graduate high school. You're making like $10 an hour or something like that. You get your college degree and you're working your ass off for that. Now your expectation just keeps on getting raised and raised and raised. And the longer you're at the job, you keep on expecting more and more money and more and more prestige in your life. And this hedonic treadmill is pretty much just talking about how when humans get a setback in their life or in a content creation perspective, how when we as content creators go from maybe at one point in time, we were getting, you know, from my perspective, 20,000, 30,000 views in the first 24 hours. And now it's down to 10,000, which when I started in 2016, I would have never even fucking imagined that I would be in a situation like that. And if I did imagine it, it was a dream. It was something I didn't really I, I couldn't grasp the reality behind it until, you know, I saw it come to fruition and it never did until like literally 2020 or 2K20. And long story short with all this, what I want to get at and talk about is that we as humans like struggle so bad at, at setbacks and realizing that at one point in time when I was an 18 year old kid and I was dreaming about this shit. I would have been livid. I would have been crazy over over 10K views a video and knowing, you know, what kind of 
prestige I would have, what kind of money I'd be making with this stuff and stuff like that too. And how I could turn this 2K shit into, into a job for myself even at that. And don't get me wrong, I don't look at it just as that by any means. But the fact that I'm in the situation I am right now, it's insane that negative thoughts could even roll through my mind at one point in time with this stuff. And again, I really want to stress the point of you as a person and you as a human, and I, I've come to the conclusion of this pretty much where I have now accepted the fact that there are ups and downs. There are waves tied to life and just anything that you're pursuing in life, especially if it's a fucking dream, man, you are going to struggle with almost anything you do if you're doing something outside the box. And what I'm realizing and accepting now is those highs and lows, those waves, those tides, everything like that. And again, that little hedonic treadmill like situation, people cannot accept setbacks they cannot accept going from maybe like fifty dollars an hour at a job and then realizing the job fucking sucks but then doing something that's more pleasing in life or pleasant in life and going to something that's 40 or 30 or 35 something like that life is so basic and so simple to the point where your living means can adjust based on anything happiness is by far the most important thing and i think a lot of people forget about that sometimes and think that people's like public perception on them and expectations in their life and maybe what their parents their friends think of them all types of stuff like that fuck that shit man do what you want to do and do it to have the most fun and the most happiness in life that you can possibly get i i've reached such a great spiritual and like mental state in life at this point just off accepting the fact that i'm doing what i love to do and I'm having a lot of fun doing it and I'm succeeding even in it as well even though like I said there may be some times that I think it's a setback and I'm going backwards from where I once was but if I go even further back to where I once was I would have been livid I would have been dreaming about shit like this so again if you're pursuing something keep going hard as fuck for it and if you get set back like what we're doing in this 2k 22 shit right here and i'm having some fun but that's aside the point in this 22k in this 2k 22 shit right here i just be accepting of understanding that there are highs and lows and there probably will be better days if you're struggling with your youtube i was struggling last year and i feel like i'm up right now but i might be down in a couple months or something like that as well once again and then i might be right back up later on in this 2k span so again whether it's content creation whether it's life whether it's school and just a job or anything like that just do what you love and have fun with life in general and just understand that there will be ups and downs and tides to everything that's what i want to get on here and talk about and i've reached a great spiritual state of mind and i'm hoping that i can kind of inspire other people who might be struggling with the ups and downs of life just in general all right, and that was pretty much well said right there by your boy, man. Listen, man, this ebbs and flows to life. There's no certainty to life. There's no, like, this is what I was going to say about that. And I tell people this all the time because this is what causes what I feel like causes midlife crises and things like that. This is what he was talking about, the hedonic treadmill, and how we are taught. I call it, some people call it the matrix. Some people call it whatever. You have that midlife crisis when you get unplugged from the matrix and you realize that there is no natural progression in the life. We are taught that throughout life, there's a natural progression. There's there's uh, pre-K, uh, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way up to 12th grade, college, uh, you know, master's degree, doctor degree, wherever you want to go. Then you get trash job, uh, uh, trash job, decent job, great job. Hey, you go, you go job to job and you learn that there is a natural progression of life. Then you hit around about 30 to 35 years of age, maybe 40 for some people, and that thing plateaus, and you realize that you have been unplugged from the matrix, and that everything that they taught you is a lie. They taught you they taught you that there was a natural progression to life, and then you realize that this thing is just chaos that they have organized into something that's bite-sized so that the average human brain can digest it. And I might be going too far with that, but y'all understand what I'm saying. They put it in a way so you can't have all the information at the same time, and so that you have to learn this stuff in steps and you take these steps but what happens to a lot of people once they realize that there's no natural progression and it was all just a game it was all just a ruse and now you're just out there to left to fend for your own devices there is nowhere else to go you're probably going to be in this job for the rest of your life you got kids now now you can't maneuver the way that you wanted to maneuver and stuff like that it is it's 
crazy to people. And then, like you said, from a content or creator perspective, I had 100 views yesterday. I got 200 views today. I got 300 views today. Uh, there was a, a time last week I was averaging 10,000 views for like two weeks. And now we back to like six and 7,000. You know what I'm saying? Am I doing something wrong? No. It's just the ebbs and flows of the game. As the game goes or as whatever you're doing goes, so goes how, how you're going to be successful at it. And that's just where we are. The only thing that I can tell you to do is the same thing that he said. Strap up, have fun, put your seatbelt on, you know, keep the thing on you and just, just keep going. Make the best out of it because at the end of the day, you having fun with this thing, just like this right here, you know what I'm talking about? All this right here, you having fun with it and, and appreciating it. That's what's going to get you get you everything that you're looking for people tell me man we love your energy we love this and that you should have been at that yeah but i just have to reach that audience that's right there is what coyote is talking about i'm sorry this is what he's talking about hidden shot he clearly made a mistake he clearly makes a mistake but look at how big that is he can't even miss you can't miss but that's what that's kind of what he's talking about those early bro even though that's wide open he should have missed that shot y'all y'all can tell me should he have missed that shot now in the conversation i don't know but like I said, I'm not already talk too long about this. If y'all want to hear more about this, hit hit me up with me and man man gonna be on stream and stuff like that, and we'll be talking about it. But once you figure out that there's no natural progression in life, that's when a lot of people start regressing or they say, dang, I done done all this stuff to get to a point that I'm never gonna get to. And then that's when they go buy the Ferrari at 40, and then they get the 20 year old girlfriend and stuff like that. Because it's like it ain't no natural progression. Shoot, if the game broke, I might as well. Ooh, get me, tell him. Hey, it's like the game is broken. I might as well go ahead and change it up too and do exactly what it is that I want to do, man. So, um, and so this when they go backwards and do like this and do all those things and things just get go crazy. But that's why that is because we're taught that there's a natural progression to life. And by the time that we figure out there is no natural progression, it's normally too late. If you are not unplugged and realize this early, I'm giving y'all the free game. If you don't realize it early, man, it can be very detrimental to you. And uh, you could... Whew. Yeah, I seen it end bad for some people. For most people, they just go get a Ferrari and a girlfriend or a Lexus and a girlfriend or something like that. But, you know, some people, hey, some people go do some things that that, that are detrimental to them and, and it's, it's just bad, man. But like I said, just realize there's no natural progression. Just because I had this many views yesterday doesn't mean it's going to go up every day. And your treadmill might be set to something different, man. My treadmill was set to, with this YouTube thing, my treadmill was set to super fast from the beginning and then it's just been slow and steady since then brute treadmill was slow and steady the whole time man man treadmill was slow fast slow and then you know what i'm saying like that cash nasty was super slow from the beginning and then after three years bam it just took off now you might look at somebody else's treadmill and be like shoot man i wish mine was set like that but if yours was set like cash nasty how many of us would have even made it getting getting a couple of views for three four years and with hella edits and then you like bro how many of us can say we would have been able to take that man and do it if we knew what the con what the what the outcome was going to be of course we could have done it but you don't know what the outcome is going to be and that's the beautiful thing about life we have no idea what's going to happen that's what gets us to keep pressing forward everybody thinks that they're the exception and they have and it has to be that way because if everybody doesn't think that they're the exception nobody nothing would ever get done we're programmed like that that's just how it is. Man, I'm going too deep, man. But just imagine the person that said, I'm going to put pictures on TV and make them so you can control them. They thought that dude was crazy. And he said, and she said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this game work. And I'm going to make one of the best video games of all time made Pitfall and made stuff move on the screen and we can control it. And this is where we are now. But it all started with that one person, everybody telling them you can't do it and you're crazy. And she said, no, nah, I'm going to make Pitfall. And hey, look, it is what it is, man. Anyway, I gotta get up out of here, man. Too much philosophy this morning, man. I'ma holla at y'all next time. Let me know if this uh, right here is a W or should I just go back to the regular face? And I'ma holla at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Chap. Guys, speak. Guys speak.